Thank you for joining us today for the conservation of critically endangered redheaded vultures with Himani Kasi. If you're joining us from Salt Lake County, Utah, this presentation is made by uh, made possible by Salt Lake County Zoo Arts and Parks. If you're joining us from outside of Salt Lake County, Utah, welcome. We're happy to have you here. Um, and this fantastic work that Himani is about to tell you about, as well as the presentation, has been funded by the generosity of supporters like you. So thank you very, very much for making this global research, conservation, and education possible. I'm joined today by Himani, who is uh, live from India, sharing a final update on her work to study these critically endangered vultures. Hamani was awarded the Global Raptor Research and Conservation Grant in early 2021. It was developed by Hawkwatch International in 2020 to invest in projects addressing global raptor research and conservation priorities. Hamani was one of our first awardees, and we are thrilled with how much she's been able to accomplish even during a global pandemic. So thank you again for joining us. We're gonna have about a 30 minute presentation and then we'll take your questions at the end. Hamani, I'm really glad you're here. Please uh, go ahead and start sharing more about your work. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, I just want to say thank you so much, uh, Hawkwood International, the entire team for this uh, amazing inaugural uh, Global Raptor Research and Conservation Grant. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm really honored to receive this first grant, the inaugural grant. So, uh, my name is Imani. I am a raptor conservationist based out of in India. Mostly I work on uh, vultures, but uh, slowly our team is working, spreading our wings and starting to work on other raptor species as well. I am from uh, the hilly region of the India. So, there are three to five uh, uh, Himalayan states. Uh, I'm from Uttarakhand and this project is funded. Uh, it's the work is done in the state of Uttarakhand. Um, these are the, my first slide, which kind of gives a glimpses of the, my species, which is the red headed vulture it is the uh, critically endangered species, uh, a forest dependent species, but you can also cite them near the community areas. And, uh, I just want, also want to thank my uh, supporting organization here, which provided me team members and turns for making this project a successful one. Yes, so a little bit of history about red headed vultures, uh, mostly vultures. So vultures are raptors, which, uh, which are, which comes in the category of birds of prey and, uh, they're the scavenging species and they have a vast ecosystem service role in disposing the dead and the decaying carcasses of animals, especially in a country like India, where we have about like 200 million cattle population scavengers and especially vultures play a huge role in dis disposing all the dead carcasses. And also the vultures have a very uh, beautiful role in Indian mythology. In the famous Ramayana, the um, Ravan, he was a demon, he actually kidnapped uh, Lord Sita. So vultures were there was to rescue the whole uh, scenario which was happening there. So this was a history about the uh, vultures. About the distribution, so across the Europe, Asia and Africa, there's the old vulture, old, old world vulture species they dominate distributed all around the major part of the globe and India is home to about nine species of vultures and, and it's with a like, great, uh, uh, great proud. I would say that, uh, in my state, Uttarakhand, all of those nine species are present and my work was focused on the red headed vulture species, which is a solitary scavenger species. Again, very much forest dependent, but still, uh, focus, uh, also so around the community area. So about the red headed vulture ecology. Uh, they are solitary species usually present in a pair and their average lifespan uh, is around 10 to 30 years in the wild and they are a very slow breeder um, species uh, around three year in a span of around three years only one ag or two ag is there which uh, usually hatch in around three years and then red-headed vultures are forest dependent species hence they require tall trees for the nesting for the roosting after they feed on a, on dead carcasses and they depend on dead car cattle carcasses for the food availability. The major findings from my global raptor research conservation project on red headed vulture is the first is the collection of the baseline data on the red headed vulture, both from the lowland and the hilly region, started with the elevation uh, of 200 meters till 1800 meters in the Uttarakhand state, 
So uh, till this time, the uh, studies which have been going on on red-headed vulture was mainly scattered around the lowland region of my state of Uttarakhand state because the hilly uh, region is uh, mostly rugged terrain and it's very difficult to work over there. So less number of uh, red-headed vultures were cited, but this was the first study uh, which I initiated along with my team where we actually uh, gathered data from the highland region. So till like 1800 meters, we went, we did the road transit survey and got baseline data on the red-headed vultures. The second major finding are the potential threats uh, on the population of red-headed vultures. The first is a deforestation because red-headed species, red-headed vulture species is a forest-dependent species. So because of change in the land use pattern and fragmentation, the deforestation is one of the major threat. The second is the feral dogs. Because of lesser number of vultures uh, in the last two decades in India, there's an increased population of the feral dogs, uh, which create a uh, great like a great amount of threat for the vultures they also uh, are responsible for spreading the diseases among other carnivores that's one of the major threat uh, i found out from this study and the third a very uh, unfortunate one is the electrocution so there's a huge uh, high tension power lines around the dumping grounds near the forest areas scattered all over the Uttarakhand state, which is a potential threat for the uh, red-headed vultures and other scavenger species, uh, other vultures as well, like steppe eagles, Himalayan griffins. Uh, during one of my findings, I found around like three uh, vulture species, Himalayan griffin during the winter's time, which were electrocuted from one of the power lines. That's again very unfortunate uh, findings from this project. And the third important findings is a very strong social ecological relationship with the communities. So when I talk about the local communities and their relationship with the vultures, they have uh, they are entirely dependent uh, for the food availability. Uh, the forest dwellers, which are also known as one gujas, they stay uh, near the forest and sometimes inside the forest area. They have a forest right act, uh, which uh, by which they are legally entitled to live inside the forest and they have good amount of cattle. So the vultures are dependent on them for the food. The cattle owners scattered all around the um, Uttarakhand state, especially in the hilly region and the pastoral community. There's a good number of pastoral community which does uh, seasonal migration uh, in the summers from the lowland to the uphill and then again in the winters they climb down. They also have good number of cattle species. Uh, just do actually share good relationship with them. They uh, move along these um, pastoral community whenever they do seasonal migration or altitudinal migration. So these three are the major findings from the project. Here's a few of the glimpses. The so this is the forest community, forest dwellers community, the one Gunjas. I went to them, I, because of the pandemic, I was not able to do a proper survey because of proximity and everything. So I actually went to them and I started asking questions about the red-headed vultures. Have they ever cited them? If there are any indirect or direct sightings? So I got to know a good amount of uh, information from them. There are a few conservation measures, which I, uh, wanted to pitch uh, at the platform from the platform of Hawkwood International to the entire audience. The first is the shifting of dumping sites to a safer location. So there's a, a poster in the middle, which is written in the Hindi language, but uh, which basically says that the uh, unsafe sites, the unsafe carcass dumping sites have been shifted to a safer sites. So under the rule of Wildlife Protection Act 1972, and those sites, are, the unsafe sites, are, have been shifted to a safer site, which are near a forest area or the outskirts of forest, forest area. Because whenever a vulture feeds on uh, dead carcasses in the in the carcass dumping sites, they need, they do require a good number of tall trees, uh, like shisham trees or sal trees, and uh, they are the very popular trees in India. They do require those tall trees for the roosting. But if there's a power line or a high tension power line present those unsafe uh, present at those unsafe uh, carcass dumping sites, then there's a higher risk of electrocution. So the first conservation measure is to shift those uh, unsafe sites to a safer location. 
The second conservation measure is to reduce the electrocution of vultures, again through mobilizing the different stakeholders. The first key stakeholder here is the forest department because they are responsible for the species conservation. So we did had one meeting, we did manage to get one meeting with them that was around uh, October, where we talked about shifting those sites and then the way forward, the same, same uh, point. The second is the power lines, the power department, and the third is the skinners. So skinners do share a very uh, interesting relationship with vultures. Skinners is a community uh, who is in direct uh, point of contact with the vultures, even before the researchers or any other community. So there's a huge uh, tannery and huge skin uh, industry, leather industry in India. So whenever there's a, um, a dead carcasses dumped on the carcass dumping sites or any of the sites uh, all along the study area, the skinners, they um, bring those uh, dead carcasses, they peel the skin off and the, the vultures are waiting uh, nearby. So basically they wait at a stretch of let's say uh, 200 meters so that the skinners do perform their work and then they start feeding on the dead carcasses. So skinners are the major stakeholders we had a meeting with uh, two group of skinners where we uh, talked about uh, shifting the sites and to not to not dump those dead carcasses just below the high tension power line. So that was the second um, successful conservation measure. The third is the awareness, education, outreach, and advocacy plan on the red-headed conservation, red-headed vulture conservation. So that it is a very solitary species. Not many people have cited this species in the last 20 years, especially the younger generation, because uh, in the year 2006, when the drug diclofenac was banned, which was the cause of uh, vulture crisis uh, in India. Uh, so then our generation, especially the 2090s kids, they were growing up and they were not aware of the red-headed vulture. So we were uh, able to manage one university level uh, Pro program on International Vultures Day and one at a school level where we talked about the history, the ecology, the conservation measures, the conservation issues of red headed vultures. And that was on International Vultures Day uh, 2021 last year. So that is one of that is th these are the three conservation measures which uh, my team was able to successfully uh, uh, talk to. So this is the uh, map where I cited red-headed vultures in my study area. So this is the uh, the boundary map of Uttarakhand and there's a forest cover map. Here, I divided the study area into the low-lying and the uphill, the high highland regions. So in the low-lying area, I was able to cite only four vultures, red-headed vultures, because of the solitary species and because of uh, the like shorter window uh, of field. The entire spring season was actually we were not able to conduct field because of the pandemic. And in the in the uphill region from like uh, uh, 700 to 1800 meters, I was able to get good number of red headed vulture species, which gives us a uh, hope to carry forward our research in the uh, in the highland regions of Uttarakhand. These are few of the pictures from my uh, study area. The first, the top uh, right. Uh, the top left one is uh, one of the uh, carcass dumping sites. It's one of the very huge carcass dumping sites uh, near the Radun district of Uttarakhand. That's the capital of Uttarakhand state. And in around like one, in around a day, around five to 10 dead carcasses are being dumped in one of these sites. So it's a huge number of carcasses and which says a good, num good uh, amount of uh, food available for the red headed vultures and other species of vultures. The second is one of the threat which shows the feral dogs uh, feeding on the similar ground where the other vultures are feeding and other birds are feeding. So this is a, this is other Egyptian vultures. They are a very good number in Uttarakhand, especially low lying area, but they do face a um, conflict with the feral dogs and sometimes uh, with the other carnivore species as well. The other two images are my about my field. Usually we conducted road transit survey. And then the second time, uh, because the road transit survey was not successful in a shorter period of time, so we designated the dumping sites and went on uh, looking for the dumping site, the dumping grounds, and the community residing those sites. Uh, this slide shows about my work with the community. 
both with the Skinners, the forest dwellers, the pastoral community, and with the uh, university and school level students. So again, we were able to pull off a very good event uh, last year on International Vultures Day. Uh, the left hand side images on university on International Vultures Day at a university level, and the right hand side image is at a local school, uh, like from fifth to eighth standard, where we were able to educate them about the issues related to the vulture conservation, especially related to vulture conservation uh, to the young generation. So what is the way forward? Uh, this was one of the first study where we uh, identified the related vultures and cited vultures, related vultures both in the lowland and the upland area. But if you want to go ahead and then do a long term study, so we just really want to focus on the that headed research in the hilly state of this uh, hilly region of the state because not much of study has been done on uh, the redhead vultures in like let's say from 1100 to 1800 meters or 2000 meters in elevation so that would be a way forward first second is uh, strengthening the role of stakeholders in redheaded con red -headed vulture conservation because that is one of the very important point and very important factor uh, which we got from the from our research that uh, the role of stakeholders the community participation the knowledge they already have and the knowledge which we can bring to them for the holistic conservation of redheaded vulture the third is the mobilizing local communities which live in association with the red-headed vulture habitats. So uh, in the Tarayak landscape, that is the low-lying area of Uttarakhand, there's a good number of red-headed vulture species. And again, there's a good number of cattle, on, cattle uh, owners and the forest dwellers. And they know already a lot about these species. So again, mobilizing them with the different technologies and then uh, the maybe like understanding what they bring uh, to us for the vulture conservation. And we do really want to conduct a long term study on red headed vultures in Uttarakhand because this was the first study which focuses on the uh, both uh, el el along the elevation gradient, we were focusing on red headed vultures, but then this was not enough. So we do want to conduct a long term study in the near future. Uh, I do want to thank, of course, Hogwarts International for this uh, great uh, experience and uh, much needed support in the times of COVID because uh, we are a very small local organization and we are very much passionate about raptor conservation and the Hawkwood International grant and the fund uh, did came in the right time. So I really want to thank Hawkwood International. Uh, I can be found here on this website. Uh, so this is our uh, organization uh, web link and then i can also be found on twitter and instagram if there are any questions i would love to take them uh, thank you so much thank you Hamani. it's so nice i know we've done some updates um you know on our blog and everything but it's so different to be able to hear it directly from you and and hear your passion for this work so i'm so glad you were able to join us um seeing some thank questions you so come in in the chat um, and so we'll take those now and we have with plenty of time so if you have questions just drop those in now um, but first before we get started there Hamani I just want to ask a question you mentioned COVID a few times um, obviously when we you know announced the grant in the fall of 2020 we didn't think that COVID we didn't really know COVID was going to be this global pandemic what has it been like trying to conduct raptor research in this really challenging period? Wow. Um, I mean, I certainly got some flashbacks of last year because uh, let's say about uh, three months to four months, uh, we were not able to move out of our houses. So it directly impacted us, uh, our team, our, uh, it actually um, was not, it was not a great time to conduct any sort of study. So um, our spring season, one, the entire spring season, we were not able to go out, but then uh, I was able to pull one field in the month of March where I actually identified a few of the dumping sites. So that really helped me to plan and strategize my work uh, as soon as the lockdown was lifted, which happened in the month of, uh, again, July and August, so the monsoon period started. So um, challenges, most of the challenges were I was not able to go out, be mobile and, you know, go out in the field and conduct survey. That is one of the challenge. And the second is, although I had grant money, I had uh, funds, but then uh, I was not able to 
uh, bring my team to one point and uh, conduct a survey with them. So that is the that is there. But then uh, we were so me so raptor conservation mostly raptors uh, are sighted in the month of let's say uh, October till January. So I did utilize the winter season, and then I think I was able to get some some good results. Yeah. Or, I'm not sure if this answered my question. Yeah, yeah question. I think okay. you know we. It's interesting to hear your perspective of not even being able to leave your homes for periods because right. I feel like, you know, I'm not sure where everyone is joining us today, but I would hazard to guess that most people on this call were not ever restricted to their home for months on end. That wasn't the way that it happened in the U.S. during COVID. Um, so I think we take for granted that, you know, you weren't able to leave your home on a personal scale. And when you were, you were really devoted to your work, um, which... I am just so, so humbled by, I think your dedication is so impressive. Um, so we have a question in the chat from John. Um, he wants to know if there was any evidence for the use of toxic non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs in the redheaded vultures. So um, that was actually uh, not our objective uh, also because um so it seems very straightforward to uh, take issue out to take the tissue uh, a trace of tissue from the dead carcasses and test them but then it does require a good number of uh, workforce and then assistant and then a good lab because i was not able to move out that was that Actually, that was not our objective, but I was thinking of incorporating that as one of my objective. So we were actually not able to uh, conduct any sort of an uh, SAID drug uh, testing. So that's why I was thinking if I want to uh, carry forward this study. So I do want to include that in my future future objective. Yeah, thanks for that question. Um, though we uh, we definitely want to make sure that we're looking at all the angles. Um, what about that field work component? Hamani, I think, you know, in the beginning, you mentioned that, um, you know, you're out there doing this base, collecting this baseline data. Um, I feel like that is such a simple point on your, your chart, but there's a lot of work that goes into it. Can you explain for people who haven't done Raptor work what it means to collect that baseline data? Um. Okay, so uh, I think the first step would be to uh, study like mostly literature review, uh, finding out the methods, how do you want to conduct the study, how do you want to sample. So during the springtime when I was not able to move out, I did uh, read good number of papers, especially on methods, because uh, if uh, we talk about the raptor conservation and especially vultures, so there's a very good method of vote transit survey which was our original method. But then uh, con because of the shorter window of field, we were not able to conduct a road transit survey, let's say from 50 to 80 kilometers in one day because we were not able to move out. So we shifted our uh, method and started focusing on the dumping grounds. So for covering the entire Uttarakhand, which is a very, which is a uh, huge state, uh, we sampled the area and uh, I sampled, I wanted to really work on the hilly region from because I'm from there, I have worked there, but I have not cited any retired vultures or other vultures over there except the Himalayan griffin. So I really wanted to work there. So I sampled, I uh, sampled the area and divided into lowland and highland and started my work along the elevation gradient. Road transect and dumping ground both, but more focusing on the dumping grounds. Uh, mostly uh, I got a help from forest departments and the cattle owners and a little bit of local team. So they mentioned us and uh, about the number of uh, carcass dumping sites nearby their village areas. We started scouting over there and then uh, started getting the data, baseline data from those sites. Thanks, I think that gives gives some good perspective on, on how much work you have to put in just to get that baseline data that you know seems so, so simple um, sometimes for folks. Um, John wanted to clarify, so he said um, he understands that you didn't find the the drugs and the vultures, but what about any um, cattle owners or pharmacy owners? Did you hear from anyone in the community that they were using those in their cattle? So, okay, so the drug has been banned in India from 2006, but then 
unfortunately uh, uh, human use drug cyclophenac is being sold to uh, humans of course to us uh, and which is being used um, for the cattle so yes from one of few of our cattle owners we did get some of the insights about the drug they are still using but that was not necessarily diclofenac there's another drug uh, which they were using so we we made a note of that and we did share to one of our mentors about uh, the toxicity of that drug but i think uh, overhead uh, on the counter the drug store i think the drugs are still being sold in india the toxic drugs which are um, not good for a bunch of so yes i hope that answers that question john um uh if you have any more questions feel free to drop them in the the chat y'all i know it's early um and so if you're just listening in as you're getting ready for your work day if you're uh in the us or canada or somewhere somewhere in this side of the world um totally understand that you can always follow up with hamani later um at her contact on the slide that's shown the at hamani underscore kati on twitter or at hamani um 11 on instagram um what about international vulture awareness day this year hamani it's right around the corner do you have any big plans Okay, so um, not like uh, the last year, but we are planning to um, actually have a very small event with a forest department in one of the school, uh, nearby school. Um, we do want to educate them. We do want to make this project sustainable because last year we did manage to pull, a, pull off a great event. So we do want to follow up on that. So not uh, a university level event, but a school level event and a forest department, we will be going to them and educate them on the conservation of the headed vultures in Uttarakhand. That sounds exciting. We were, yes. we were glad to have you here to, to lead into International Vulture Awareness Day this Saturday. Um, super, super exciting. Um, well, before we, we wrap up, um, we still have some time for questions, but I wanted to put a link in the chat. Um, and if you're uh, not able to see the chat, it's hawkwatch.org slash GRRCG. And that's the link to the Global Raptor Research and Conservation Grant. Um, we haven't uh, announced the, the dates or details for this year quite yet, but that's coming up very soon. So if you or someone you know are a raptor researcher um, working on some of the most threatened or understudied species in, in the world, feel free to take a look or share that and uh, you know consider applying. We got a lot of great applications the first and second year, and we're really excited to offer it again this year. Um, I'll also put an update blog in the chat. Um, and if you just go to hawkwatch.org slash blog, you can find that update as well um, on our most recent grantees. Um, I don't have any more questions in the chat for you, Hamani. So I feel like I would like to close it out and just ask you, what do you need from, from people to continue your research? You know, you mentioned wanting to do a longer term study. Um, what resources do you need? What support do you need to take care of this, this really important species? Okay, so I think the first thing I would need, uh, I think that I have to start from myself, is to start publishing few of the results because there has been a, a very, there has been work done on red-headed vultures, but in a very small pocket in the entire India. The first thing is would be to uh, publish a few of the results I got from the study. And I think for that, I will be contacting Hogwarts International to get guidance on publishing through journals or maybe articles. And for making it sustainable and for the longer term study, I do want to uh, focus on the nesting and the uh, breeding uh, and roosting ecology of red-headed vultures because we were not able to found single nest during our entire study period. So that would be my second uh, follow-up uh, if I want to work, when, when I want to work for the red-headed vulture conservation. And for the people who are working on raptor conservation, I just want to say that uh, this is one of the very uh, beautiful uh, species, especially red-headed vultures and old world vultures and new world vultures. 
they are very interesting they are community uh, related uh, you can get a lot of interdisciplinary uh, aspects we can learn from them so yeah just keep on working on them because vultures are not uh, really appreciated in many cultures of the entire world so i would say just keep on working on them and start uh, publishing this well so that people who are working on different part of the world they can uh, read more yeah i think Yes, it is so important that we we highlight these really critically important species that uh, maybe have been overlooked in terms of people appreciating them. So thank you for the work that you're doing there, Hamani. If you are interested in supporting Hamani's work, we hope you'll reach out to her directly. Um, if you're interested in supporting the Global Raptor Research and Conservation Grant, you can always reach out to us on our website or you can reach out to me directly. My email is kelliot at hawkwatch.org. We'd love to have your support so that we can keep supporting researchers like Kamani that are doing this incredible work. Um, if you have any questions, please follow up with us afterwards. We'd love to get you some answers. Otherwise, thanks so much again for, for joining us today. Thank you, Hamani, for being here. And thank you to Salt Lake County Zap for sponsoring this for folks who are in Salt Lake County. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you so much.